Hey everyone, super excited to be here today. I'm Jessica Haria. I'm a software engineer at Trifacta. Trifacta is a research spin-off that helps analysts clean and prepare their data. So our enterprise app is actually run on customers' Hadoop containers. We had a huge problem trying to debug what was going on in the container. So what we ended up doing is uh, to keep our development environment as close to these containers as possible, we ended up using Docker to, um, to actually develop and test on. Uh, today, I hope to show, you, uh, to show you around this brave new world. This is a fancy technology a lot of people are using, and hopefully we'll go through a few concepts, and then you can see if this is something that you want to incorporate in your organizations. Okay, so we're gonna go over what Docker is, uh, the differences between Docker containers and virtual machines, another technology you might already be familiar with, um, some fundamentals of Docker, and when and when not to use Docker. So what is Docker? Um, who here has ever had a dependency issue? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so uh, dependencies are really a matrix from hell. You have all these applications and you need it to run on all this stuff. And how do you know one fits into the other? You don't. And this was actually very similar to cargo transport pre-1960s. You had all these objects that you needed to transport in all these different ways. But you didn't know if one would fit in the other, which was also hell. So what they did was a very clever thing, that they had this container. So now each object here only needs to know how to fit inside one container. And each vehicle only needs to know how to transport one object, which is a container. So think of Docker as the shipping container for your code. So a Docker container basically helps you write a lightweight container uh, that packages up all your application and its dependencies, and every environment that you deploy that in now only needs to know how to run that one container. So now that matrix goes away, and you're happy if you're a developer, you're happy if you're a DevOps. If you're a developer, you only build it once, and then you can run it everywhere. If you're a DevOps person, you have this one container and you know exactly how to run this one container on all your different services. Okay, so now that we know a little bit about what Docker is, you might say, I know of another thing that helps me manage my dependencies, and that's virtual machines. A lot of people use virtual machines for development. So how does Docker relate to virtual machines? Docker is to applications what virtual machines are to operating systems. And we'll explain that. So a VM here basically virtualizes your hardware. It runs an OS kernel on top of your host's operating system. And it also packages up the user space, which is the binaries, libraries, and all sorts of other dependencies. Containers, on the other hand, actually share the operating system of the host, but only package up the binaries and libs. So they only isolate what is called the user space. So essentially, you can think of a virtual machine as the only operating system that's running on your hardware, and containers as the only application that's running on your operating system. So now that we know how the two are slightly different, uh, let's go to uh, Docker fundamentals. There are a few buzzwords that uh, you'll definitely hear about and you'll want to use, and this is what they are. So you author something called a Docker file. Uh, there's a Docker client that you interact with. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff going on in what the Docker, uh, when you say sudo apt get install Docker. There's a lot of stuff going on in here. And then there's also something called the Docker registry. We'll explain each of these things uh, one by one. So when you actually download the Docker engine, what you get is a Docker client. Uh, a Docker client is a really uh, simple command line utility, and you can type in Docker build, Docker push, Docker, et cetera, et cetera. What this does is it tells the Docker daemon, which is the actual process, how to build, run, and distribute containers. So the Docker daemon is actually the thing that's doing all your work for you. And uh, sometimes you may actually need to reach out to 
code and Docker containers that other people have made and used. And those are stored in something called a Docker registry. So that's exactly like your GitHub repo. So you can pull and you can push from it. You can use things that other people have built before. Um, and you basically, what you pull and push is something known as a Docker image. What you author, what you're writing, is a Docker file. So I'm saying from Ubuntu, and Ubuntu here is my base public image that I grab from someone who already has that image. And there's a bunch of these in the wild out there. Um, I set up my environment variables. I install whatever I need to install. I export some ports. So I do all these things. And what I'm, ex what I'm really doing is using that base image, I'm constructing a set of um, file system commands. I'm making a few file system changes on top of that image to make my custom image. So think of an image as a custom set of file system changes that uh, the image itself will never change and is completely stateless. So then what is the thing that is running my web app or database? That is a Docker container. So to use a metaphor from object-oriented programming, if you have a class, you can instantiate a class and you can use instances of the class. And an instance of the class is what actually stores your variables, does all the work, talks to other instances of the class. Similarly, you have a Docker image, and you can instantiate a Docker image, and the instantiation is what is a container. So a container is the object that will create your network interface, it'll run your applications, uh, the container is the one that is actually has state, you can read and write to it, and much like instances, you can also create multiple containers off of a single image. Okay. So how do these all work with each other? So what I did here is I authored a Django Docker file. I said Docker build. I built a Docker image. And now I'm saying Docker run. And I'm actually running two containers off of this image. I do the same thing with a database container. And now I can have some code in both my web app and uh, database containers to actually talk to each other. So now I have essentially created a system of servers and databases, and these are actually really lightweight objects. Um, it typically takes, once, a, once an entire image is built, it'll take you less than um, like a few seconds to actually pull up a Docker container. Okay. And uh, if we also, at, at the start of this, we also made the point that I can actually take one thing and run it on multiple other things. And the way you do that is you have the same thing. I write a Docker file, I create an image, I instantiate a container from that image, and it's all running on my system. Now, I actually want to share this with someone. So how do I do that? How do you share code? You push it to a repo. So I push this to a centralized Docker um, registry, and you, uh, if you want to consume it, you'll pull from there, you'll pull the image, you'll instantiate your own container, and you'll run it on your operating system. So you see this is really, really seamless, and it works like a charm in practice. So this image that we saw earlier, there was just like a bunch of uh, buzzwords. Hopefully you'll see now how they all connect to each other. We haven't spoken about a lot of different things that are actually needed to make Docker work in production. So there's um, how do you tag images, how do you uh, manage these, there's a lot of tools for actually bringing up containers, networking with each other. Um, and there's a lot of really cool stuff and this is all under active development since this is a pretty hot community right now. But then you might ask, uh, how do I know this is even relevant to me? Do I even need to do this, or am I good with my VMs? So there are actually times where you might want to continue using virtual machines. Uh, Docker is really good when you have, uh, you want to run multiple copies of a single application. But maybe you want to run multiple copies of different types of applications, and you don't actually want to break down everything to the same application level granularity that Docker offers you. So that's, that's a reason you may not actually want to use Docker. Uh, again, why Docker? You can build once, run anywhere. It's really easy to use for both development and testing. 
It's pretty lightweight and disposable, so you don't really have to worry about, you know, oh, my ports got messed up today. How do I, you know, how do I provision my VM? Do I need to reload it? What do I do? You can just blow away the whole container and create a new one. Um, and there's a lot of good community support around Docker. Another thing with Docker compared to VMs is that the Docker engine actually runs on top of your host's operating system. So it's a little more vulnerable uh, in terms of just a few security um, things to keep track of than um, typical VMs that actually use something known as a hypervisor to manage different operating systems. So this provides you less isolation. So you might be a little concerned about that depending on your use case. Um, but in practice, it doesn't turn out to be that big of a problem. Okay, so in summary, uh, if there is one thing you should remember uh, about Docker, it's write once, run anywhere. Uh, we went through um, containers versus VMs, when you might want to use each one, and the basic Docker flow is to author a Docker file, uh, which specifies an image. Uh, you can pull these images from a registry as well, and you can instantiate an image uh, to form a container. Okay, that's it. Thank you.